Today I'm meeting with Kevin. He lives on a rural property and he has no access to scheme water. He relies heavily on rainwater. So we've installed all new gutters with slight falls to the new 100 millimeter downpipes. The one thing that has caused him problems is the pump. Kevin has decided to go with the gold standard and he's chosen the Scarlet II, which of course is from Grunford's. Now it has a few more features than his last pump. It's built stronger and it's the perfect pump for drinking water. It is self-priming and it can draw a massive eight metres below the pump. For you DIYers out there, that's about eight Bunnings shopping trolleys end to end. It has inverted technology, so that means that the motor is able to adjust the speed depending on how many fixtures you're using. So it pumps water out at the perfect pressure to all your taps. This also eliminates pressure fluctuations, and you know what that means, you betcha, lower running costs. It has a one touch pressure adjustment. So this intelligent control panel allows simple adjustment to the pressure on all taps. And also the Scala 2 is really quiet, so it won't disturb your family or your neighbours. We're just about to turn our pump on. Let me know if it disturbs you. I don't think I heard you, but I don't think it's going to matter because it's 47 decibels, mate. It's, just, it's not even as loud as a dishwasher. Let's get this Scala 2 installed. All right, so I've just got to disconnect the old pump and install the new one. Now, I've got a bit of adjustment to do. This is the feed that goes from the, from the uh, rainwater tank. Now, what I want to do is put a 25 mil isolation valve in here, so in the future, if the pump ever needs to be disconnected or anything like that, it's easy to shut off here. So once I've, once I've put that installed, we'll probably put the pump in this location here, so it's closer to the house and nice and compact, I can get a cover on there or something like that later on. And I've just got to adjust the piping. Probably going to get rid of this valve because we don't really need it anymore and just to clean up the whole section. All right, so this is something important too. So when you have a plastic fitting with a thread on it, if you put your hand on it, you can feel it's very smooth. Now, if you go and put some thread seal on that, you know, do it a couple of times around or something, that thread seal can turn. So if you're screwing it into a fitting, the thread seal doesn't stay where it is. The, the thread seal um, stays on the fitting and it turns and it will always have a continuous leak. So the only way to get rid of that is grab your, grab your hacksaw and just scratch it a couple times, about four or five times around. And as soon as you put your finger on, you can feel there's grip lines through it. And that what, that's what bites the thread seal on. So always scratch the fitting. Then when you put the thread seal on and you go around like this, it bites in, stays where it is, and it won't leak. So that's a little tip from a plumber. All right, for this install, these are the tools you'll need. Thread seal, your hacksaw, your pipe cutters, your adjustable spanner, your smaller multi-grips. This is your large multi-grips. So this is your crimper. We're gonna use a crimper. You can use PVC you know, fittings if, if you like, then you don't need that, but you can hire these things as well, so. So you can see the isolation valve is now installed. So here's the feed from the rainwater tank. And you see now I turn it on, it's, it, it, it feeds. So all I need to do now is to run the pipe around here and into the inlet, into this loose nut connection. So with these loose nut connections, it's very important that you understand. So the O-ring is what seals the two parts together. Now the nut here, that is what screws onto the thread and that's what jams that O-ring nice and tight. Now, I've seen a lot of times where guys put thread seal on this thread, all that's doing is making this nut harder to screw on. And you want that as easy as possible because you want to compress that O-ring. So never ever, if you're using loose nut connections, never ever use thread seal, put it on like that. This nut has to go as easy as possible on there, tighten it up to jam that O-ring, and then it's going to be all good and seal and it won't drip. Now this is where the articulation comes in really handy on the inlet and outlets. See how I can adjust the angles, get it all right, and it's very easy to adjust and to lock it in place. It makes it super easy for us. Okay, so we've got the rainwater connected to the inlet. The outlet goes off to the house and there's a filter underneath there. So that's all connected. See these, these adjustable uh, connections are just unreal. So remember, there's a tag on there that says, no tools, just tighten them up by hand. So that's referring to the, the adjustable nuts. So you just 
snug those up. Then you'll probably just need to snug up the, the big loose nut, loose nut connections to get that O-ring nice and tight, all right? And then she's all good to go. You can turn the water on so it gets to the pump. And the only thing we need to do now is just to prime it. So if the water level is above the pump, all you need to do is make sure the rainwater can run through to the, to the inlet of the, of the pump here, okay? If you take this priming cap off and water starts coming out of it, just from the pressure of the, of the tank, then you don't need to self-prime it. Just, just open it up a bit, see how the water's coming out of it? So that's primed now, so you don't have to stuff around with it. So if you're drawing from a water source that is below the pump, obviously when you take the priming cap off, no water's gonna come out. So that's when you need to grab some water, some priming water. You need about 1.7 litres to two litres. You pour that in right to the top. Okay, so it's coming out like that. Pop that back in, and then that means it's primed. So once it's primed, you just gotta plug it in. Now it's best practice to open the furthest tap first and then turn the pump on and that'll now fire up the pump, purge all the air and get a good flow of water coming out the other end. So once you're happy with the location, then you can go ahead and bolt the pump down with either using dyno bolts or the you know, plastic wall plugs, they're great too. There's a few features that I know us plumbers will really appreciate. First of all, it's got dry run protection. That means if no water is detected at the inlet of the pump, the pump will stop. So this prevents internal damage and also stops your motor from burning out. It has anti-cycling protection. So if you have a slow leak from a tap or a water main and the pump keeps turning off and on over a short period of time, it'll turn the pump off so you can go out and investigate where this leak is. So if you have a house with multiple bathrooms and would like constant pressure at all the taps, and like some of the features that I've explained in this video and, and that Kevin is now experiencing now, then check out the Scala 2 from Grunford's. It might be the one for you.